Hey folks, we're here at this fabulous Harvest Host outside of Cape Charles on the eastern shore of Virginia. And I gotta tell you, it's an amazing place, it really is. We had a really nice peaceful night last night right outside the goat barn. You can see the gubby van back there. There are chickens and guinea hens and ducks and pigs, a lot of goats. A lot of goats. <laughs> and a great dog named Buddy who Charlie had a great time with. I uh, highly recommend Arlington Farm if you're on the Eastern Shore. However, that's not what this video is about. In this video, we're going to take you to four of our favorite distilleries in three states, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. We'll take a tour of each of the facilities and we'll taste some great craft spirits like bourbon, whiskey, vodka, moonshine, and more. Everything he loves. <laughs> he loves them all, yep. he does. And each place is unique and different from the others. So it's worth stopping at all of them if you can. Yeah. Another awesome thing is that they're all Harvest hosts. So if you're a member, you can get to imbibe and stay. How cool is that? Yeah, it's very it's cool. It's really cool. The first three distilleries make up the state line whiskey tour. And if you tour each one of them, you can get your passport stamp and you get a free shot glass from each one. You also get a decorative barrel stave to display your shot glasses, but uh, I didn't get the barrel stave because I don't have room in my van yeah. for a barrel stave. I do have room for shot glasses though, which will come in handy because as I break each one, I will always have a replacement. He right? breaks everything. <laughs> He's do. a breaker. That's right. Our first stop was Casey Jones Distillery, about 70 miles northwest of Nashville in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Our host for the day was Ross, who gave us a really interesting tour that included the original coffin still built by Casey Jones himself. Then we moved on to their modern facility and learned about the grains they use, their mash, and unique distillation process. We returned to the bottle shop, which doubles as their tasting room, and Ross educated us about the variety of spirits they produce, especially the bourbon and moonshine. We started our tasting with 92 proof Casey's Cut Moonshine. I could drink that. Yeah. <laughs> I could drink that, yeah. definitely. Next, we moved on to 30 proof flavored offerings including muscadine cut, peach cut, and apple cut moonshine. Before we sampled the bourbon and rye whiskey, however, Ross advised, don't be shy, try the rye. <laughs> and so we did, and it was excellent. But then he brought out the big guns, the 126 proof four-year-old Casey Jones Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And what Ross said about this one is that it'll get the party done, right? Is that what you said? Right away. <laughs> it'll get the party done right away. And when it does, as a Harvest Host member, you'll be able to walk right out the door to your RV and boondock in the peaceful bucolic setting they provide just steps from the distillery. You can't... Just half an hour south in Pembroke, Kentucky, set amongst hundreds of acres of cornfields, our next stop was MB Roland Distillery. Wow, you'd be really hard pressed to find a more beautiful location than this former Amish dairy farm. Of course, we started with a tour where Olivia explained their mash bill and fermentation process, and wow, the aroma of all that grain cooking and fermenting just smelled delicious. Oh, yes it did. But perhaps the most interesting part of the tour was the old dairy bank barn, which they use as their rick house. It was like a movie set. It was so beautiful. I had to ask if there was whiskey in the barrels because I thought it was staged. On to the tasting room. Now, M.P. Roland surely takes the prize as the distillery with the widest variety of offerings. Okay, folks, this is literally like being a kid in a candy store. Okay, this is the first one we're trying. We're trying the single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Oh, that's really smooth, very wonderful, 113 proof. The next one is the Kentucky Straight Corn Whiskey. This one is 95% corn, 5% malt. Let's try that one. Also very, very nice as you would expect it would be. Beautiful. Now we're straying from bourbons and we're going directly to the Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. And this is 68% rye, 27% 
white corn. This is Kentucky Azul. Yes, Reposado. Pre-mixed mint julep. I could just guzzle that bottle. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, folks, final one, and she has advised me to wait to the end for this. This is St. Elmo's Fire, which is cinnamon and cayenne. It's 100 proof. Oh, wow, that smells like cinnamon, all right. Fantastic, we're taking a bottle of that for sure. This is everything Fireball wants to be when it grows up. And happily, as Harvest Host members, we got to stay overnight in this indescribably beautiful rural setting on their huge, flat gravel lot directly across from their new Rick House. A visit to MB Roland should definitely be high on your whiskey tour list. What a fabulous place. It's just beautiful. Our third and final stop on the state line whiskey tour was Old Glory Distilling, just 13 miles south in Clarksville, Tennessee. We started with another very interesting tour of the cavernous warehouse where Chance described their mash bill and cooking process. You can see, this is where the alcohol is actually separating from the spent mash. Okay, so this is what we're trying to collect. This is the byproduct at the bottom. Right. But perhaps the most interesting part was viewing their incredible 22 stage still, which is so tall they had to cut a hole in the ceiling to fit it in. It was truly awesome. I've never seen anything like it before. Their 2,000 barrel brick house was no less impressive, and Chance taught us the difference between something labeled Tennessee whiskey and everything else. What makes a Tennessee whiskey a Tennessee whiskey are uh, two things. It has to be made A, in Tennessee, uh, cannot be made in any other state, and B, it has to be filtered through a sugar maple charcoal filter. If it's not put through that sugar maple charcoal filter, then it is no longer a Tennessee whiskey. And I do believe the sugar maple charcoal filter does lend a certain sweetness and a particular smoothness to the spirit. That was my experience, at least. And that is the Tennessee whiskey, folks. Okay, I might be a convert to Tennessee whiskey. It's a winner, old glory. Old glory, small batch bourbon. That is super, super smooth. Tennessee vodka. I guess I can't say Nostrovia. <laughs> Cheers. Wow, move over Tito's. This is delicious enough that I'm going to buy a bottle of this. This is the pinup gin, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, 90 proof gin. Here we go. Juniper forward, orange peel and coriander. Yeah, that's a good one too. And if all this weren't enough, they have a bar and a vast, very imaginative cocktail menu. So of course, we had to try some of these inventive concoctions. I had a lavender lemon drop made with a smooth shine moonshine. It was beautiful and delicious. But my favorite thing was their 100 proof pinup barrel aged American gin. Wow, this is some of the best gin that I have ever had. I had to buy a bottle of it. And to top it off, this amazing bar uses perfectly clear artisanal ice in their cocktails. And yes, artisanal ice is a thing. An hour later, it was still surviving in my go cup out at the van, which was conveniently boondocked for the night in their paved parking lot. Another successful evening and another great distillery. Great distillery. So having visited all three distilleries, we completed the state line whiskey tour got our passport stamped at each place. But more importantly, I got my three shot glasses from Casey Jones, MB Roland, and Old Glory. I did not get the barrel safe because I don't really have room for it in the van, but I also bought this beautiful heavy bottom curved whiskey glass from MB Roland that I just love. Mm. I'm gonna break that thing, but until I do, I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of it. I should have bought two. <laughs> I should have bought two, that's right. Now, this next distillery, while not part of the state line tour, we just had to include it in this video because we just love this place and wanted to recommend it to you. Nestled among the majestic Appalachian Mountains, just a few miles from Cumberland Gap National Park, is Axe Head of Distilling in Pennington Gap, Virginia. If you can get there on a Friday night, you'll be entertained by some of the best pickers in Appalachia, either inside or on their huge outdoor stage. I went down the river and I laid down to sleep. I went down the river, won't you lay me down to sleep? I went down the river and I laid down to sleep. I woke up, there were shackles on my feet.
We, unfortunately, arrived on a Saturday and missed the show, but they're all streamed live and recorded for posterity on their Facebook page. If you like bluegrass, this is the place to be. Our friend Katrina would be there. Yes, definitely. Gabriel gave us a tour of their small batch distilling and described how they use a basket with wood sticks to separate the botanicals used to flavor their unique gin. Yeah, and that was interesting because it's something I've never seen before. And naturally, they're dog friendly, and we had a great time sitting at the bar, meeting the locals, learning about their spirits, and enjoying, once again, amazing, amazing cocktails. cocktails. <laughs> Owner Brian Hogan is an ex-Marine, so as a nod to his roots and perhaps a wink at the Navy, he's created something called Marine Strength Gin, which is 115 proof. Navy Strength is a mere 114 proof. Nonetheless, the gin is excellent. And I had it in a Marine Strength Grapefruit Martini. Yummy. And then Gabriel made me something really special. A raspberry bourbon made with fresh muddled raspberries, lemon juice, simple syrup, and 93 proof axe handle straight bourbon whiskey. It really was something special. And I want to say that all the tour guys were excellent. They all did a great job. Yes, they did. My only real complaint is that the state of Virginia has a law that prevents them from serving more than three ounces of alcohol per person. So unfortunately, we could only have two cocktails, which was a big disappointment for me because they were so good. I could have three, four, five, <laughs> six. But you didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank goodness I didn't. But I bought a bottle and took it out to the van, which was boondocked in a really peaceful, awesome location tucked up right against the trees, right next to the distillery, just beautiful. They even offer free 50 amp electric and water hookups, which is insane. We love their visit to Axe Handle and we're sure that you will too. Next time, we'll just make sure we're there on a Friday. So that's it folks, four awesome distilleries. Creative libations. And peaceful, safe harvest host boondocking. What else could you ask for? Yeah, exactly. Anything else? See you down the road. We'll see you down the road. <laughs>